Hi, my name's Emily Ross and I'm nearly a cookbook author, which is honestly crazy. If you told me two years ago that I'd be writing a cookbook, I would have said in my dreams. So the fact that right now I'm in the process of publishing a cookbook with HarperCollins, one of the largest publishers in the world, is so wild to me. I didn't know how any of this worked before starting my cookbook journey, so I thought it might be fun to show you some behind the scenes, how it all works, and what a nearly cookbook author gets up to in her day. So let's get to it. It's a classic start for me. I wake up at 7.30 a.m. like every other day, slip on my fluffy dressing gown and head to the kitchen to make a frappe tappa latte. I'm not joking, who actually has time for that? I just make myself a honey and lemon with hot water because the real truth is is that I got addicted to tea and coffee well caffeine basically so for the past three years I only have caffeine as a little bit of treat for when I want to change things up a bit so once I've made my boiling water concoction I sit down at the dining room table and go over my day I write up my to-do list check my emails and tick off any general admin that needs doing from substack replies to blog comments I tend to spend about 30 minutes doing this because I don't know if anyone else feels this but writing down everything I have to do before the day even begins helps me feel feel so much more prepped and ready for the day. I also write out my tasks in time blocks. So for example, I'll give myself four hours to film recipe videos, three hours to write up a blog post, two hours to do keyword research, one hour to do brand work, etc. You kind of get my point. I just feel like it works really well for me and then it's the most efficient way of going about my work. So then once that's done, I have my shower, I get ready, and bam, she's back. Looks so fresh and so clean, baby. One thing that I find amusing in the foodie industry is that at any event you go to, you will always get given a tote bag. And hey, I'm not complaining. I love a tote bag. And I have to say that the bold bean one is my current fave. It's the perfect size, it's very sturdy. So once I've put my laptop, my tripod, notebook, and all the essentials in it, I make my way to my photographer's studio, which lucky for me, isn't too far away. Now, as someone who is self-employed and works alone a lot, walking into the studio and being greeted by smiley faces is the best thing. So once I'm in, I do a mixture of laptop work and helping out in the studio. But before I go into anything, I want to first talk about the team. Before doing a cookbook, I naively assumed that all cookbooks were written, styled, cooked, and sometimes photographed by the author. This is the case for some books, don't get me wrong, but most cookbooks will have a food stylist who cooks all of the recipes and styles them so they look really, really pretty. You'll have a prop stylist who chooses out all the plates bowls and style of the photo, the photographers, the art director, the project editor, the publisher, and I'm sure there are a handful of other people who are paramount when it comes to getting a book done and dusted. For my book, we've got Liz and Max, the photographers, then Hannah, the food stylist, and Eden, Alice, and Valerie, who are the food stylist assistants, Jennifer, the prop stylist, and then throughout the week, my publisher was there, the art director and project editor. Everyone is delightful, funny, supportive, and so unbelievably talented. And if it weren't for them, then none of this would be happening. So thank you guys. While the food is getting made, the props are picked out that have been chosen specifically by the prop stylist for every single recipe in the book. There are a handful of these things called prop houses around London, where you'll find bits of crockery, cutlery, napkins, vases, all kinds of funky bits and bobs that the prop stylist rents out for a week or so to use for the book. She also then matches each dish with a specific recipe, not forgetting a gorgeous background to go with it. The food stylists cook between eight to 10 recipes a day, which is just so many. They're then styled, shot, and then eaten by us. Hannah, my food stylist, received the recipes far enough in advance for her to be able to prep what she needed to be cooking on what days. And then she literally will have marched around London trying to find all the different ingredients needed for the recipes. She's honestly so organized. I don't know how she gets everything done. She prints out all the recipes that will be cooking and shooting and I help as much as I can when it comes to the food prep and cooking. But when they don't need me, I just crack on with various different admin tasks. So once Hannah got all the food styled and ready to be photographed, Liz and Max do their thing. Because of the spec we were given by the art director, all of the recipe images are shot from above down which I personally love. We shoot by a really large window and then they have a big light to help with adding brightness as well as some shadows. And within the book, it seems like there are three different types of images that are pretty standard. You've got recipe shots, incidental shots, and headshots. Now, recipe shots are, as it sounds, photos of the recipes that you will see by each recipe right up in the book to show you what the final dish should look like. You've then got incidentals. These are shots that get slotted into random pages of the book, as well as images that are for the introduction and early chapters within the book for processes, pantry staples, etc. Lastly, you've got author headshots, which once again is pretty self-explanatory. 
where they'll take pictures of the author either to use on the front cover or within the introduction. Oh, and the last type of photo is literally just figuring out what the front cover shot will be. This may also be an illustration for some books or just several images placed onto the cover. Now, I don't know if this is the same for everyone else's experience, but with my team, they were super, super chill about me having friends and family visit the studio. So various different people came to visit, like my family, my boyfriend and godmothers came to visit. My literary agent also popped in, which was super fun, as well as one of my besties who recently broke her wrist, bless her. It's honestly such a surreal experience because I've been working on this book for months by myself in my kitchen, testing recipe after recipe. So seeing the food come to life through photos is honestly so incredible and such a pinch me moment. Now you're probably wondering where on earth does all the food go? Well honey we eat it all. Nothing goes to waste. We trial the food throughout the day and if there are any tweaks that we need doing or making we make the changes there and then. Everyone gets a taste and it's so much fun. Any leftovers we just divvy up and plonk into takeaway boxes and just take home. Once we finished up all the recipes that needed doing on that day we cleaned up the studio, packed up the dishwasher and said our goodbyes put the rubbish out and then I headed off to a very fun event. I'd been invited to a PR event to try out Madame Sum's dumplings. The evening was really, really fun and involved a blind tasting sesh, which was such a laugh. I caught up with some fellow foodie friends, made some new friends, and then headed home. I really hope you enjoyed my day in the life and feel free to let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about the process. Bye.